drums. Spin the knob and change patterns. I know all this because of the new additional things we've added to Unify 1.6. Um, hello, my name is John Skippy Limkul. Hands together, head bowed. Hey, we've just released Unify 1.6 for you all to devour and enjoy. So this video is sponsored by my website, PluginGuru.com. You can go here to log in to download this update, or you can go to Ilio.com slash Unify dash updates. And the download links are right here to download for free. Uh, Unify is licensed, so it will not operate if you don't have a license. So. We thank you for all of you guys that have purchased Unify. Uh, it keeps growing. We really appreciate your support. Um, this update is more refinements to make the experience of using Unify becomes wonderful. Really, really cool in a couple of ways. There's a number of things, as you can see, there's quite a big list of updates. I'm not going to go through all of them. The change log is available, the small bug fixes and stuff like that. Those are all available to be seen, but the main ones I want to cover, I have knob names assigned here, right? Well, because of that, now inside of Logic, if I go to Logic and I go to the automation list for Unify, those knob names are now registered and show up as the names for the automation lanes. It's no longer, it used to be just called macro one through 32, but now if a name has been assigned to a knob, then it's now available over here as the name in logic for automating, which is wonderful. Um, some of the other big ones that are really cool, like I showed you, I'm going through and playing these guitar phrases. And I can spin and change what sample it is. And other, other companies sell all sorts of phrase libraries we're not the first to do phrase libraries by you know we're, we're late to the game compared to a lot of these companies but i wanted to make it more useful in unify i wanted to give you more information so we came up with this thing called variation and we've refined it to where it can work like this where we have there's a text file inside of the library which has a big list of all of these different 61 guitar phrases and then inside of guru sampler those guitar phrases are also available sequentially with the name of the samples being the chord progressions, right? So now as I move through this and if, see if I have this up and running so I can use a controller knob, I can now see that it's perfectly in sync. It's showing what we're doing and you can see what chord it's going to be. If I go to a different one, G minor is going to be. And on top of that, I <laughs> these phrases are available in seven different tempos from 65 beats per minute. Um, or 110 beats per minute, or 128 beats per minute, right? So this is one way of using the variation and the, the knob controls that we have. Another way that I think will make even more sense to a lot of you, because that's a little abstract until you play with it, is this. This is a live setting, for example, or it could be that you're using this inside of your DAW. It will work the same way, where I'm going to have it switching between three different sets of layers coming on and off. We have this ability now over here where you see the little green MIDI activity lights. If you click that little activity light, you can mute or actually we call it enable or disable the layer so that 
It's now playing this third layer, right? Turn it off. Turn on this layer. It hasn't canceled anything. The effects are still there. And when I start playing, And then I can spin my variation. And if you want, you can go over here and turn it on. I could turn all three on if I want. And by doing this, you, we, we made this song example file, and um, it's actually not included with the download of 1.6, but the little .guru file is included as a link in this video description. It's on the website in the owner's manual. So here I have it where I can go like this and hide. It's a little .guru file. You just drag it over the top of Unify, say yes. One of the cool things we also did in this update is when you add new .guru files to rebuild the database, it's lightning fast, uh, far faster than it was in the past when you added a library. Go to the user library and you'll find this patch called three part song switcher. And it's set up for the knob. And basically what we had to do is assign a, if you go to the link parameters, there's a couple things. There's variation which is the global throw of the knob with how many variations there's going to be. And then above that are the three variations for the three layers, right? And so by doing this, we now have the ability to make it so that you can have a text file that says intro. Here, I'll show you what the text file looks like. It's, <laughs> it's very basic. So we go reveal in Finder. If we go user library to the media, there's a little text file. <laughs> and inside this text file, it says intro, verse, and chorus. Instead of intro, if I wanted to say this disco key of, I can't type it all, F minor smile, save. Now when I load up this song, <laughs> Instead of saying intro, it now says disco key of F minor and smile. So you can make text files that say what you want it to say for the different sections of your song and have it change Unify layers. And this one layer in Unify, as we all know, can be a very complex, more than one patch. I could go over here and right click and add other things to this. I could even add BPM drums or whatever I want to add to this the 24 layers. So you can go quite here. Let's add a vocoder to this even. So we've got a lot going on. So we got part one doing the bass and piano. When we go to layer two, buckle your seat belts. And then when you get to the last part, And again, you can turn the parts on. And then go over here and spin this. It doesn't cut anything off. That's what's so fun with this, is this is, <laughs> it's just MIDI data being changed. So it's not mute and solo like on a mixer. It's mute and solo of what is being listened to for when you're playing. So it's, Everybody in church can now have it where it says what key the song is going to be that you're going to play. You could have a whole set. We only did um, up to five for the variation number. Uh, if we go like load curve preset, five steps means there's five stair steps to go between one, two, three, four, five. Uh, but it's really, really cool to have that ability in here. Okay. Uh, the other thing that's really fun that we added is plugins and making sure that you can have access to all of your plugins. Um, a number of companies in 2021 are not able to make VST2 plugins. 
they can't get a license from Steinberg. Steinberg only will give them a license to release VST3 plugins. And so what's happened, uh, VST2 is a little bit more cross-platform stable for us. So we prefer VST2 whenever possible. But now there's all these other companies that are doing things where it's only a VST3. And once you've scanned in your VST2 plugins like I have, I have a really hard time trying to remember the VST3 plugins I have that I don't have a VST2 version of. So what you can do is you can now scan in all of your, if you're on a Mac, you have audio units. On PC and Mac, you can scan in VST and VST3, and then use this option right here, remove redundant plugins. This will get rid of, if there's a VST2 version, it will get rid of the audio unit and the VST3 version. If there's no VST2 version, it will keep the VST3 version and get rid of the audio unit version. And if there's nothing but an audio unit version, then it will keep just the audio unit. But nobody does just audio units because it's that's a Mac-specific only exclusive thing. And nobody in their right minds would do much in the plug-in world for just Mac because PC makes up a higher percentage of the customer base than Macintosh by itself. But what happens by using the remove redundant plugins, check this out. I'm going to go to my format and here's the built-in VST. And at the end of this list, all of these plugins right here are VST3 versions that I don't have a VST2 version of. And there's no way my mind could remember that Spacecraft and all these other ones are available only in VST3. Well, Unify made it so that now I have all plugins that are on my computer able to be used inside of Unify. Simplifies the world. <sighs> awesome, 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 awesome. So it's a free update. There's other refinements and fixes along the way. We hope you enjoy this update. We hope it does good things for you. I, I love how stable, solid, the timing and everything in Unify is so great. One more thing I should point out that's really important is on the transport page, we made it so that anything outside of this range is not going to trigger the transport or the internal clock like it used to. So um, for, for the libraries, like these guitar libraries that I'm doing, um, we we came across situations where if you were if you're playing something up here, it would start the clock. I don't want it to start until I play low C. And so now it's set up to where no matter what I do above, because the range for watching of clock is right here. And it's now absolute, does not look for note on, note off, starts, any of that stuff doesn't trigger it like it used to. So that's a really nice thing to have for if you're doing synchronized things like this. Okay. Enjoy the update. Thank you for your support. See you later.